This is Jack Rebney. This show is called The Offenders. It contains foul language. So, Tony, will you do me a favor? Will you? Will you do me a kindness? And if you're easily offended, don't listen to the fucking show! No more! Welcome back to the Offenders Podcast. As always, I am Kyle, and joining me from across the state of Georgia, Evan. Hey, everybody. And joining me to my immediate left, probably maybe a foot and a half away, is Shane Tipton. What what distance is immediate? Immediate? It's it's right now. It's right now. Well, yeah, no, you so said right now, left. you're about a feet. To the left. Immediately to my left. So you're right now to my left. <laughs> Left now to my like, shit. <laughs> is, is the immediate a, a, a metric or is it an English measurement? Um, actually, it came from Zimbabwe because when a lion is chasing you, you have to run immediately. <laughs> and if you don't, you're going to be immediately left behind. That works. <laughs> it's an English measurement. It measures how poor your English is. <laughs> oh wow! Mine's don't you really tell me bad. how to talk no fancy shit. <laughs> I talk exactly how I want because I'm American. You have a taco exactly how you want? No, but I have a burrito from fucking Bar Burritos in my chair. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that was supposed I to be. I mean, neither. It, it was your story, Kyle. The fat guy oh! in the chair at Bar Burritos. Oh, oh wow, I forgot all about chair. that. You guys need to quit smoking pot so you can remember stuff. I smoke crack, I'd like to let you know. Not pot. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> well, then continue on. <laughs> If it's good there, enough for Jake the Snake Roberts, it's good enough for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not um, anymore, though. He's doing well. I was going to say, you talking about... <laughs> there, you talking about bad English. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay. You're a math major. So, exactly. But so <laughs> international students, when they come over to a, a American like educational programs where they might actually be a TA or something, they have to take this test called a TOEFL. And basically, it's just measuring you know, how well they understand the language. And a lot of them don't do well on it because it's English is their second language. Mm-hmm. But I actually saw some questions from it, and I was like, shit, I'd fail this fucking test. And I speak <laughs> English as a native language. <laughs> yeah, some of that shit's difficult, like subject-verb agreement. Just just going back and reading all the stuff, it's like, those are they. That's like the stupidest sentence, but it's grammatically correct. I'd be like, those are them over there. Those are yeah. they over there. That's them is what I'd say. That's them. Yeah, so, yeah, I can, English is fucked up. So. It is. It's super difficult, but we don't think about it because we've known it all our lives. Or we just use it wrong. That's what it is. <laughs> we don't talk good. Yeah, I ain't no good at them wording. <laughs> we ain't been to none of them fancy schmancy book learnings at the colleges. But, uh, so this week we're not going to talk about English. In fact, we're going to talk about <laughs> not needing to know English and going overseas to travel. So, uh, somebody... Uh, a couple weeks ago, we were asking, hey, if there's anything you want us to talk about, and somebody requested on that episode, it was, let's see, who was it? It was username Vermis13. He said, I'd like to hear about you guys' experiences traveling overseas and why it is so difficult for Americans to travel, both logistically or personally. Logistically, there's a weight limit on how much you can move at one time. <laughs> <laughs> Planes can only carry so much <laughs> weight, guys. So first and foremost, we're going to have an improv exercise. Shane, mm. how about you tell us about the first time that you went to Germany? <laughs> well, the first time I went to Germany, mm-hmm. I was with this this nice little Jewish girl. Unfortunately, <laughs> she had a cold, <laughs> and she sneezed us back in time, and we had to fight the fucking Nazis. What? Never hang out with Kitty Pryde or Wolverine. You're going to wind up in another dimension. <laughs> I, if I remember correctly, you told me that it was specifically evil German soldiers who hated people who had colds, and they were called Snazis. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. Nice. How about you, Kyle? How about the first time that you ever went to France? Oh, um, well, I was, actually, <laughs> I was actually studying um, 
French cuisine, so I wanted to learn about French fries and French toast. <laughs> <laughs> so I traveled over there and uh, studied at the Cordon Bleu Institute of, uh, <laughs> Institute of uh, Eating Good. And who was the uh, big cheese on that campus over there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then why don't you tell us about the first time that you went to Thailand? Well, it's a good thing I don't drink because there are a lot of ladyboys over there. <laughs> and had I not the keen insight of a sober man, I would have not noticed their slightly larger hands or Adam's apples. <laughs> but thankfully, I did pay attention to them and I said, hey, how are you doing? Uh, I have a friend named Kyle who would probably much be more up your alley. And by that, I mean the Hershey Highway. <laughs> and they, they, they said something in Thai, which I don't speak, but I did try to understand them. I mean, try to understand them. <laughs> So all in all, all I did was I went and I found Master Xian, and I kicked a tree a whole bunch, and I was like, how about this? Bah! What about this? Bah, bah, bah! And then I became Jean-Claude Van Damme in Kickboxer. I wasn't sure if you're trying to be Jean-Claude Van Damme or fucking Boss Rutten for a second. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, how about <laughs> this? But, but if you were, I guess you would have said, in the liver. Yeah, it's starting time again. <laughs> Heel hook. Heel hook. <laughs> Oh. But, um, so yeah, actually, Evan's the only one who has actually traveled abroad out of the three of us. He's been to. <laughs> I had traveled abroad before. <laughs> yeah, she traveled. was all right. It was abroad. What are you going to do? But, uh, <laughs> you've been to Japan how many times now? Four. Working on five. Five. And I'm mm-hmm. hoping, actually, I'm not hoping, I am going. <laughs> yeah, to dude. To do this fifth time. So, this is kind of going to be like a. How the fuck do you travel, you know, to other countries as an American? What things should you do or should you know when doing it? Episode. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, what are the problems with being an American and traveling? Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of those, like, mm-hmm. conce- like misconceptions that people have, or maybe not misconceptions, maybe <laughs> things they think that are true. We don't realize it. Well, it depends on if they watch Fox News or not. Oh, that's true. <laughs> it's fair and unbiased, so it's okay. But, uh. Um, oh, Excuse me, I have a, I have a cold. <laughs> what does the fox say? T-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-
to get my passport in advance. Okay. Yes. And a couple of uh, just general, I mean, these are just kind of travel tips. You're going to want to see, uh, first and foremost, what airline you're using. Look at what their specifications are for luggage if you're doing carry-on. Because I always carry, I always do carry-on. I never actually ship luggage because that's a pain in the ass and it could get lost. But if you take carry-on with you, it's there. So, so see what the dimensions are for your carry-on. You're going to want to find out what the uh, liquid requirements are. I think it's like less than three ounces uh, for right now. Uh, get ready to be molested by the TSA guards because they're gonna they're gonna touch your balls or well, your you, boobies. Hold on, though. You say liquid requirements. What do you mean liquid requirements? So like limits, if you have cologne the or is what he means. You like, can't have a container of liquid over so amount. Or they want to show them. And that includes uh, like uh, like shampoo and conditioner, body wash, all that stuff. Oh, uh, see, I never think about that because I usually don't do carry on. If I do, it's just like something small. I usually do pack my luggage, and then it doesn't matter then, I guess. Also, if you're going to carry luggage, take a look uh, when you're buying your ticket, because a lot of those places will throw in, like, a free 50-pound bag or something. So, like, you could just you could just take one empty suitcase and fill that motherfucker up with comic books and video games, <laughs> and you didn't pay shit for it. You saved your money shipping and handling from fucking sending it from the post office overseas. Do you probably. usually do stuff like that? I have quite a few times, yes. He should probably clarify that a little more. That sounds like when you're going over there. Yes. I think he means if you buy stuff in the in the place instead of shipping it back, you put it yes. in your suitcase you get for free. Yeah, yes, yeah. Because exactly. you'll get one carry-on, then one free one that they'll they'll board. Mm-hmm. So, like, when you board, um, you I mean, when you fly, you usually fly through Japanese air? Yeah. J- Japan Air, Japan Airlines. That's if you're okay. going to Japan, by the way. Yes. Well, fuck that. They'll fly wherever <laughs> I want them to. <laughs> Listen here, boy. I want to go to fucking uh, British Columbia. All right. <laughs> Shit. I'm gonna do what I say. I'm working. Well, I, a lot of I was say, a lot of American airlines though they don't have free baggage. Yeah. It's you have to pay for a bag. So that's actually interesting that they still have a free one. Yeah. So definitely look into that as well. Um, another thing I would recommend is. Just go out to a Barnes and Noble or something, just a bookstore locally, and look at some of the uh, like an idiot's guide to so and so culture, or just look at some travel books for wherever you're going. Because I mean, the last thing that you want to do is look like another dumbass American going over there to act like you own the goddamn country, which is what we do not need. All right, so well, hold on, let's let's still let's not get too much over with what once you're over there. That's still the prep, so you should get a book to see what you want to do once you get over there. Uh, not even just that. I mean, sure, what you want to see, but how you should act when you're over there. Okay, fair enough, yeah. Because, I mean, you, like, for Germany, for example, you can't go over there and be like, hey, where's a Nazi museum? Because you're not supposed to say... <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you can't even say the word Nazi over there. First of all, they don't have a Nazi museum. I exactly. You. So you want to go over there somewhat respectful of the culture that you're about to partake of. They were all on vacation during that time, so... <laughs> so that that is something that I strongly recommend is whatever place that you're about to go, do a little research into the culture so you don't look like a jackass and make the rest of us Americans look even worse than we already do. All right. So um, when it comes to actually the planning of stuff, this is something I know you talked about it when you did your mm-hmm. AWA panel on travel, but did you – what? What would you think is better or more affordable to do? Like, go with some kind of travel group or agency that sets stuff up, or go individually when you start preparing things? Well, to be to be honest, I could only speak for going to Japan, uh, because that's what I was planning for and that's what I was expecting. So, if it's something where you feel secure enough into the culture where you think you could get around, I would say go on your own. But, I mean, if you if you would feel much safer going with a group of people or having somebody show you around and you don't mind spending extra money, that's something you want to do too. But to explain my situation, I've, I've loved Japan since I was a little kid. And I'd spoken a little bit of the language and I knew enough about it and I knew the websites that would tell me where to go, where I needed to go. And I knew that a lot of the shit was in English anyway as far as signs and whatnot. So I just went over there saying, you know, fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this on my own. I don't need to pay some jackass five thousand dollars to show me where the train signs are because i can see them myself so if it's something like that if you if you do enough research on your own save yourself some money so you can buy some some souvenirs or something that 
you know, a nice meal that you can't have over here in America. That's my recommendation, but that's that's kind of up to you. If you want to put in the in the elbow grease and do the <laughs> research, yeah. You can always find a friend that's in that country on Facebook or something and be like, hey, when I get over there, where should I not go? I'm yeah. sure they'll be able to tell you because yeah. they know. Mm-hmm. That's true, that too. too. <laughs> Make some friends on Facebook. That's a, that's a good idea. From Shane, of all people, with the with the Facebook. I'm just saying. <laughs> um. So... If you don't mind saying, how much have you spent on your trips to Japan on on average? How much would you say it costs for everything, like tickets, hotels, and and all that type of stuff? I would say, including money for souvenirs and spending, f- uh, flight, meals, hotel, transportation, and just spending money between three and four thousand dollars. Okay, and that'll get that that got me over there for a good two weeks. The plane flight's the most expensive part, yeah, by far. It? Yeah, it's like it was like twelve hundred bucks at the most for a round trip. And that was <laughs> slightly higher than than regular coach. And how long is that flight to, from from the Atlanta airport to Japan? There must be a fucking time rift or something because on the way there it's about thirteen hours, but on the way back it's like ten to eleven hours <laughs> every time because you know they're like, oh, it's the trade winds. It's like the trade winds are always fucking there. There's time travel that you're not telling me about. I'm not an idiot. No, no, the trade no, winds blow in the same direction. So if you're going there, it takes longer. If you're coming yeah. back, they're 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 in your favor. One way you're flying fooled. into them, one way you're <laughs> flying away from them. <laughs> Whatever. There's a conspiracy. I went to infowars.org. I know you're trying to lie to me. <laughs> I like how you got the website wrong. Oh, what is it? God damn it. I think it's dot com. Dot com. com. I know there's <laughs> that okay. proves you don't go to it. So you everybody knows I saw that t shirt today, that's why I said it. Oh, did you? Yeah, wow. I saw that t shirt. It was on camouflage, so I almost didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just seeing words flying through the air. I, yeah. That's the first time I've even heard of seeing somebody wearing one of those, those shirts. Last night, you know, all jokes aside, it was fucking weird. I saw something on fire going through the sky. And I, I was like walking downtown. And I was like, "Holy shit! It's eight forty-six p.m. and there's something on fire in the sky." I will remember this. And then I went to go show my friends, and it was fucking gone. It was really weird. <laughs> Shouldn't do drugs, Evan. I don't, man. High life's a high guy. Jeez, Brown, high guy. All right. So, uh, so you need to say, you know, have between three and four thousand dollars for like a trip to Japan. Maybe less depending on where you're planning on going. Some places yeah. might be of course are cheaper. Yeah. Okay. This is assuming that you want to stay in a hotel with your own bathroom and ride on the trains at a much lower discounted price, you know, eating smart. Yeah, I know a lot of people when they like when they travel to like other countries they'll do the hostel stuff where like I, I don't know, it just doesn't seem I don't think I could do that. <laughs> because I've heard like horror stories from staying in these hostels of just like people like basically just you can't sleep because there's some there's a constant party going on or people are drunk or people are doing drugs or you know you got to worry about people stealing your shit while you're asleep or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, That's true. And also you're going to be sharing a room with somebody. So that means you can't sleep comfortably in your boxer shorts. It also means that you're going to have to shit with somebody else, which is a big no-no for me. I want to shit my own toilet and just be done with it. That's that's good to know that you plan your travels based on who you'd be comfortable sleeping around and shitting with. Well, you I, should, because if you're going on this place to, to enjoy yourself... Being extremely uncomfortable every time you had to go back to the place you stayed would kind of be counterproductive. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's general life too. Because <laughs> you're probably Not just usually, traveling. You're probably usually exhausted by the time you get back to the hotel room, anyway. So you've been walking around and stuff all day. Exactly. Last all thing right. you want to do is fucking go back with some smelly asshole who's drunk and throwing up everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So once we've got everything planned for us, and we're actually traveling and packing what would you say is stuff that you should prepare to take with you most assuredly especially on another country like a lot of times cell phones are i know one thing like cell phones in america might not work in other countries or just general outlets you're plugging stuff into to charge up might not work in other countries based on the voltage they use absolutely how did you deal with all that uh luckily for me when i got over there i was an idiot so i was just like These plugs don't look right. What's wrong with these? (laughs) (laughs) So, thankfully, I was able, since I was in a 
what's an, an electronic district. Akihabara has like all the top of the line electronics. I just showed up and I was able to get an adapter. And I figure most places are going to be like that, but you might want to look into the adapter situation too. Mm -hmm. But as far as cell phones go, there's a lot of places I'm sure outside of Japan as well where you can rent cell phones if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. But this would be my professional advice to you. If you have a laptop or a cell phone that has Wi-Fi on it, just use that instead. Because anything that you need to do, you can you can talk through email, you know, and pretty much every place is going to have free Wi-Fi these days. So that's going to save you from having to do a cell phone, and uh, it's just much cheaper that way. But you can still you can still rent cell phones if it's you know like a security blanket for you or whatever, something makes you comfortable. Well, I do know too. Like if you have, I think if your phone uses a SIM card, you can get international SIM cards that let you basically use your phone on other networks. So, but that can be very expensive. It can be. And you also have to like contact your cell phone provider if you do plan on taking your phone over there. Yeah, mine was something somewhere around $10 for one minute. Yeah. And each phone call, Ooh. even if you're only on that phone call for 10 seconds, it's one minute. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. And that's not even getting into the data usage, so... Yeah, it'd probably be cheaper to rent a phone over there if you're going to do if you need that's a true. Phone. Same thing with a car, you know. You rent a car. Don't don't fucking ship yours over on a ferry. That <laughs> shit'll take forever. Just rent a car when you get over there, or get a smaller car. And give that ferry a break. Poor little thing. Oh, ferry princesses, man. <laughs> also, uh, another thing, kind of going back to what I was talking about before. Grab a phrase book. Phrase books are going to be priceless. Even if you completely butcher it, they're going to go. Oh, he's trying so hard. And they're going to help you out. That's if you're going to Japan. Other countries might make fun of you. Imagine, <laughs> imagine someone's listening to this and they just barely understand English, but they get it. And they're like, oh, well, I'll go to America with the phrase book. And they'll be like, oh, they're trying. No, we're going to make fun of you. Yeah. What the fuck is this asshole trying to say to us over here? <laughs> Come to our country not speaking English. Fuck I'm sure, you. I'm sure there are other countries like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Most other countries, not all, but most other countries tend to be more... Like, I don't want to say more necessarily bilingual, but they're more understanding. Like, if you're in Europe, those countries are so small and so tightly packed that you're gonna, you know, there're gonna be people speaking other languages all around you all the time. But over here, the, you've got Canada in the north, which yeah, there are people who speak French in Canada, but not a lot of them. But for the most part, everybody speaks English. So, I, I think people over here are probably less understanding. Yeah. And plus, I mean, if you just think about it, logistically speaking, <laughs> the United States is fucking huge. Yeah. Like, a lot of countries are, like, the size of Florida. <laughs> and, you know, that's only one state out of 50, what, we got 52 now? I think it's 50 still. Yeah, 50. it's still 50. Where'd you get 52? I always Playing get confused cards. with fucking Hawaii and Alaska. I'm like, is it 50 or 52? It's DC's fault, the new 52. It fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my quick. Okay, never mind. Never mind. It's the I'm playing card thing, man. It's the playing card thing. Mm. Playing cards are 52. Yep. That's what it is. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. But, um, all right. So, phrase books and then prepare to either rent phones or some other system or just, like you said, rely on, like, a laptop. Mm-hmm. Because... Uh Go ahead. I was say, I guess if you're traveling with people over there, you're, you're going to tend to be together anyway, so you're not going to be like, oh, we need to get in touch... You know, if we get separated or something like that. Because, I mean, you've traveled with people over there before, so do you mm -hmm. typically all travel together <clears throat> when you go to do things? or For the most part, I'm, I'm kind of a... Although I do like hanging out with people, I like doing shit by myself a whole lot. So a lot of times I'll just be like, okay, today I'm going to go here, I'll meet you back here, at so and so. And take like, you know, five, six hours to myself to just go out and do whatever the hell I want to do. But, you know, it's probably a better idea to go with a friend... You know, so you have at least one other person there to kind of help you come over culture shock because that shit will get some people. <laughs> culture shock is serious business. When you're all by yourself in some place that you've never been before that's so completely alien to what you know, it's uh, it's shocking, pun intended. <laughs> yeah, see, that's kind of why I wanted to travel with you since you've been there so many times. Yeah. Because it would it'd be helpful. So if I ever want to go back again on my own or with somebody else, then it wouldn't be as, you know, what the fuck moment. When it happened. <laughs> Another thing to think about, uh, see, people always tend to forget about little things when they travel. Like, you want to make sure that your hotel has a washer and a dryer. 
because you don't know when it could rain or a fucking car could sling up muddy water all over you, and you're probably not going to want to take like 18 pairs of pants. <laughs> so make sure that you check and see if they have like a washer and a dryer. Um, if it's if it makes sense to you frugally, uh, see if you can bring over some detergent. Uh, that might be a little difficult. I always do my shit over there because all the places have like you know you give them a dollar and they're going to give you some some detergent stuff like that, but. That's one thing that people forget a lot, you know. Maybe bring an extra pair of shoes. I hadn't even thought about that. See, I had not even thing. thought about it. That's that is something that was, that has not even crossed my mind. That's crazy. Yeah, so may, maybe one extra pair of shoes. Make sure you got stuff for laundry. Uh, carry a backpack. Backpacks are priceless. Plus, you can bring one on the air, on the airplane for free, probably anyway. Because I always take one carry on plus a plus a backpack plus my laptop. So. <clears throat> You'd be surprised with all the stuff you can get away with when you carry when you go with carry on, but backpacks are priceless because you can carry around any of your shit with you at any time. You know you can have a little emergency pack. You know, print out lots of maps. Print out uh, like if you know where you're going, print out the directions to it. Print out a picture of the map so if you get stuck with somebody who doesn't speak the language or if you don't speak their language, you can just show them the map and they should be able to make that out. Maps are going to be a really good friend of yours. You can get pretty much anything at Wiki Travel these days. That's where I get all of my shit from. It has never let me down once. Um, some people like to carry umbrellas over there, but I mean, like in Japan, you can just buy one at a, at a convenience store, which is like a gas station without gas for like a dollar or two. So that's something else to worry about if you don't want to get rained on. That reminds me of something. I think you were telling me about it, Shane, where like, they would, if you go in somewhere over there, you put an umbrella in like a the bucket when you step inside, so you have to carry this umbrella around with you the entire time. Yeah, you'll come out, your umbrella won't be there. Mm -hmm. But everybody's just like, well, just take a different umbrella if you put an umbrella in there. They just don't worry about whose umbrella it is. It's like, as long as there's the same number of umbrellas, that's all that matters. Hell yeah. So, that's pretty cool. All right, so that's the, I guess, pre preparation to getting over there. I guess one thing that I thought about is that that flight is so long, be prepared to have something to do if not sleep on the plane. Like, I don't know, I'm not very good at sleeping on a plane, but for that long, I probably will be able to. Yeah, it's, it'll, like, having, having done it four times, I'll tell you, sometimes it is difficult. Uh, bring some gum for when you're going through liftoff and when you're landing, otherwise yeah. your ears are going to feel like there's ice picks stuck in them. Yeah. Once you get past that, though, you can watch two or three movies and you'll just get tired because all you're doing is sitting there watching movies. So you're going to take a little nap. It might only be for an hour. It might be for four hours or normal sleep. But you'll just you just watch some movies, keep some headphones on you. You know, use your phone, use a laptop. They're going to tell you when it's okay to use electronics. But for the most part, it's not as bad as everybody says it is. Or I wouldn't be going over there all the time. I think it's now... I, I want to say they just passed it where you could just use electronics whenever. Like, they realize that it's not really a big deal. It's like, you can use electronics the entire time. Or at least some airlines, I think, do, are doing it now. Well, that's I, awesome. I know they were going to do it. I don't know. I know the yeah. pilots didn't like it. Because the the problem is not you interfering with the um, with the actual, like, electrical equipment normally. But when they're landing, like, if they can't see or something like that... Or, or just when they're landing, it's like it uses far more sensitive stuff. It's shooting like beams up there that are like triangulating shit like that, and they don't want you interfering with that. Oh, I that see, is I've, kind of important. I've yeah. heard all sorts of different things. I heard I actually had a on a small flight I was on once before, where it's only like I think it was like a twenty-two seated plane or something like that. We all asked because it was just the pilot and the co-pilot. You know, do we need to turn off our stuff? He's like, no, you don't have to turn it off. He's like, it doesn't matter. But then I've also heard that they don't like you having it on at takeoff because they want you to pay attention to the safety stuff. And if you're not paying attention, oh. then it's just a waste. I, I think it's one of those things like there's all these reasons people claim, but there's no good reason in actuality. And that's why they're just kind of like, the one know, I heard was the, it. It, it interferes with a spe one specific thing. It's only when they're landing, I think it is, is that they're using that equipment and they're, the, yeah. the thing that picks it up is very sensitive. Must not be that bad because the FAA said whatever. I think, but another thing I was told too is that like you should turn it off because when you're in the air, it doesn't matter anyways. You can't use it because all it's going to do is kill your battery because it's just going to be constantly roaming and searching for a signal. And that's going to just, that's one reason that you should do stuff like that. 
But Lots of cell phones actually have an airplane mode for that specific reason. I think they it all do now. Off. Another thing that I wanted to mention, because um, you were talking about in case anything happens with the safety, when you're booking your ticket, opt for the emergency exit seat for one reason. Well, for two reasons. Number one, you're going to be able to stretch your legs out. And on a fucking 14-hour flight, that is priceless. And number two, you will have to help people get out of the fucking plane if something happens. But if you do, hey, at least you die being a hero instead of just some jackass. (laughs) Fuck that. I open the door and jump out. Later, fuckers. Get yourselves out. (laughs) Well, that's because you're a supervillain, man. (laughs) I'm trying to be the good guy here. (laughs) Oh, that'd be great. (laughs) <laughs> Sir, do you think you do you think you could handle helping people off the plane in case of emergency? Oh yeah, I got this. We're going down later, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what about sitting in that seat makes you more able to help people than someone else. That'd no, be they, they actually you, ask you. They actually yeah. say if you don't think that you can do that, and you're sitting in that exit. Do you are you, do you want to change seats? I've seen yeah. people change seats before because of it. <laughs> but I mean, that's like no qualification. It's just like why not just let the person get out. The first, and then someone who can do it will do it. I it's think, kind of the, the reason that they, they ask you at the seat, because you get it's a better seat than everybody else has, so it's like, hey, if the shit does go down, since you have this nice seat, will you help us? Kind of like that. Yeah, it's kind. Of, I think it's like relegating duties before there's a situation where you have to. So it's like, listen, if you're sitting here, you need to be prepared, but you'll be opening this door and helping people off who might not be able to help themselves off, like children or the elderly. Are you okay with that? <laughs> Kyle, Kyle would be like throwing the old people towards the back of the You're not getting off this motherfucker, you asshole. <laughs> you, like, you've lived your life. You stay on this thing and you die. You die. You I'd be like, God, oh, Kyle, no. You have to let them live. He's like, no, no, no. I'm not driving anywhere. If the old people die, they won't be taking up traffic for the funeral. I won't give a fuck. Buried at sea. No fucking funeral. <laughs> All right, so we're out. We're now we've got everything situated. We're flying. We're over there. We've landed. We're in wherever we're traveling to another country. As an American in another country, Evan, what kind of things should we be wary of that we don't want to fall into problems that people maybe are in other countries have you know perceptions as us as Americans? It probably depends. That probably depends on the country. Shane, Shane just nailed it. It depends on the country. But I would say kind of try to apply the, the rules for a workplace to most normal conversations with strangers in other countries. Don't bring up religion. Don't bring up politics. And don't bring up sex. Because you don't know who you're talking to. They could be some fucking fanatic. And they might not like Americans in the first place. To be, to be worst case scenario here. But I mean, it's completely up to you. I always say the first thing you should learn in another language is please. <laughs> Maybe right. thank you. You should figure out who you're talking to and talk to them in the manners you talk to them. Yes. That's that's my opinion on it. I don't give a that shit. That is far more detailed I, than mine. I don't give a shit if like I'm from America or Canada or wherever it is. It's like if you're talking to a person who's a cool person, it won't matter what you say to them unless you're just being an asshole. If you're being an asshole, people are not going to like you no matter where you're from. Yeah, like there's fucking asshole Brazilian fucking soccer fans on my last trip god damn <laughs> corinthians polista worst fucking tourists ever were they there for like a uh, some big soccer game or something versus japan or something let me tell you a little story we're gonna get off subject here so we're slightly on subject okay so myself and my buddy who were traveling over there we we had been over there before let, let me tell you this when you're on a train everybody's pretty much quiet Because it's just kind of a respect thing for the public. Everybody over there just kind of keeps to themselves. You know, they don't talk very loudly. Everybody's kind of cool and collected. They might be sleeping, whatever. It's like a nice, safe, quiet place. Well, this day, there is a soccer match. So you have these loud, smelly assholes spilling beer on everybody. Like, just farting all over the place. And yelling and like... Forcing video cameras into people's faces who obviously do not want to be videotaped and all this shit's happening. It's like, that's how you should not travel. It's like, if you want to support something in another country, that's fine. But be respectful of the place that you're going to and don't be a fucking asshole all the time. Because those people, I bumped into them twice. And I was like, it can't get any worse than the first time I met them. 
wrong. The second time was worse. <laughs> they call you them can soccer read about hooligans that my... for a reason. Well, see, now, there's probably almost no country that you could do that in and people wouldn't think you're an asshole. I mean, maybe they don't care if you're farting because it's like a sports thing in some places like that. What? <laughs> they what? Man, you haven't been around people like... like if everybody's here, someone farts, you just laugh at them. You wouldn't be like, what an asshole! Oh. Why are you farting? <laughs> what an asshole. Good point. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but you know, people usually don't want beer spilled on them. And you don't, they won't, don't want people shoving cameras in their face. I thought you meant specifically, it's like, hey, it's football farting time, everybody. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> on the seventh inning no. of this baseball game, everybody rip one. <laughs> well, some people, yeah, some things are handled differently in other places. Like, uh, baseball is a much different sport than it is in america like in america in japan if you go to an american baseball game it's a lot of like sitting down chilling watching some cheering and stuff like that but like in japan people get crazy about baseball like it you're yelling it's it's more like the way we act at football games where it's just like yeah. you're acting like an idiot so <laughs> but yeah and, and it's the same thing like if you're going to travel overseas i don't i don't know japan's perspective on soccer i don't know if they have soccer hooligans or not i'm sure they <laughs> I, don't, I couldn't really see that. I, I don't I, imagine them having too many hooligans in general. Not a, not some big public place like that. They'd probably be ejected. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so one of my questions about uh, as an American traveling to another country is what you've said something about the phrase book, taking something like that. But in general, what are your thoughts on not knowing the language other than just this phrase book when you go to a, another country? I, you know, I know you've got your your side just for Japan, but in general, what would you say? Did Rule you say number you should... one. Okay, go ahead. H- here you go. Speaking loudly <laughs> does not make them understand it any better. <laughs> That's the first rule. <laughs> hey, where is McDonald's? That's not going to work. <laughs> so I don't know why the fuck people think that happens, but I see it happen all the time. So number one, yelling loudly will not make people understand anything quicker. Talking slower might if you're talking too fast. Talking slower, yes, but not louder. But yeah, that, that being on a phone at a call center and getting somebody with a speech that doesn't speak English well, you always can tell when somebody's talking to somebody like that on the phone because they're yelling at them on the phone. <laughs> yep. No, sir, that's not what I said. <laughs> well, Look, I I just they uh, my windshield is um uh, it uh, breaking, you know. <laughs> the uh, that's French Canadian, by the way. Maybe they're pretend. Maybe they think. Like, they're the distance of the countries away from them. <laughs> so they're yelling so they can hear them from the country right. they're in. Maybe if I let them know that I'm from America by estimating the vocal range that I would need to shout overseas, they can understand people, me. I wonder if people in other countries do that, though. <laughs> I don't. I don't Some think things are do. universal. Mm-hmm. I don't really think they do. I think it's an American thing. Like, if people don't understand you, you just assume they can't hear you, so you just yell louder. Mm-hmm. You get I'm louder. Sure, and louder. I've heard people from England do that. Maybe it's an English thing, like an English language thing. It could be. Another thing I would say is just just be respectful. You know, you're visiting another country. But I know this is this is this might be a point of contention to some people, but you are going to be judged somewhat as an ambassador of your country. So when you go over there, try not to be a dickhole. <laughs> Because some people be like, no, hell no, I ain't no representative of America. Well, yeah, you kind of are because you're an American in a foreign country. So, therefore, you are the face of everything that they see on TV. So, it is your job to try and be nice and not be a dickhole. If they're a dickhole in everyday life, they're going to be a dickhole over there. I know, but this, that's why I'm talking to them. I'm like, hey, buddy. <laughs> we're well, tired we'll just of tell them to not be friends. a dickhole, and then that way they won't be a dickhole anywhere. What Shane said, don't be a dickhole. <laughs> Don't I'll listen just, to that, Kyle. I'm sorry. Don't just, we didn't say that. I'll just tell them I'm Canadian. <laughs> they won't believe that. It's like, you're the meanest Canadian I've ever met. You sure you're not an American? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's funny. What a great reputation they have. I want to go to Canada where nothing bad ever happens. <laughs> right? I bet they don't have prisons there or hospitals or morgues. It's a land of fucking milk and honey. I'll tell you why. Because fucking George St. Pierre is from there. And nobody wants to fuck with I am the best fighter of all time. I did and, not uh, mean to break his leg. He fucking whooped Johnny Hendrix's ass on Saturday. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. There's or some people who debate some of those calls. I, it was close. But that last takedown he got cemented his victory. There's going to be a rematch, I know. But the point is you do not fuck with Canada. Because George St. Pierre will kill you every time. Or uh, Rob Ford will snort you. 
Who the hell is Rob Ford? It's Chris Farley. He's the Toronto. <laughs> he's that Toronto mayor who's like basically coked out of his mind and look drinking, and he's he's go, literally a, go, he is. Go on YouTube and look up like what what's his name? Rob Ford. Rob Ford. Rob Ford highlight. And he'll have like a highlight reel. He's like fucking Chris Farley in a skit. <laughs> What's that shit on Black Sheep? He's like smoking, snorting, drinking. <laughs> He's like with all those little kids. <laughs> See, Shane, Shane says Chris Farley, but I, I go to the. He's like Kenny Powers if he was mayor of a city. Oh my gods above! Yeah, <laughs> he is on par with Kenny Powers. Like he wears jerseys to fucking city council meetings because he don't give a <laughs> shit anymore. Because they can't impeach him, so he just walks in there with his jersey talking, and they tur- they all turn their backs on him when he talks. Like none of them <laughs> look at him, which is like somebody was talking about how like that's the same thing that the Klingons did to Worf when they they didn't <laughs> think he was a Klingon anymore. <laughs> yeah. They just turned their back to him when he spoke because they wouldn't acknowledge him as a true Klingon. It's like they're doing the same thing. It's wow. ridiculous. Like what, what's up with Toronto? Maybe Canada's not this great place. Or maybe uh, it's just Toronto. There we have it. They have a great fucking death metal scene, I will say. Cataclysm, Into Eternity, Gorguts. Canada's a okay by my by my judgment. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so as an American traveling to another country, you say you should be respectful. Be respectful and understand certain customs. Like I know you said the thing on the train. Like I didn't know that that mm-hmm. people are quiet on the train. It's so. nice, dude. You can catch a little nap. Oh, it's so great. The, well, that, the people will come by and wake you up. That does make sense, though, that they're quiet on the train because a lot of times that's probably the, one of the only moments of not having to do work or move somewhere that people have. So just that yeah. moment to take a nap is probably amazing. Speaking of which, did you see that badass thing that was in the news about the, uh, it was like, um, a Hasidic Jewish guy. He, uh, this, this like young African American fellow fell asleep on his shoulder and everybody was freaking out on the train about it. It's like, do you want us to get him off you or do you feel threatened? He's like, no, he probably just had a hard day. Let him sleep. <laughs> you feel threatened. I know. Let me tell you what. I would not be insulted by that. If I woke up and they're like, everybody was just like, oh, man, you know, I hear him as I'm getting off the, the thing. And it's like, I can't believe you let that guy sleep on you. He's so dangerous. I'm so badass. Even <laughs> asleep, I can, I can wipe out this whole fucking train. That's the I'm whole some point. kind of fucking badass motherfucker if I can be asleep and I'm dangerous. It's like, what the fuck is going to happen while somebody's asleep? It's it's just going, it goes so far as to show that we get a little too, uh, we're a little too fear indoctrinated in this country. God and it's like, it. that guy was taking a stand. It's like, what is he going to do? He's just a guy who probably had a hard day. Let him sleep. <laughs> I mean, I can understand being disturbed by it. Some people don't want people touching him at all. Mm-hmm. And that might bother them. I, I would understand that, but threatened? What was threatening about it? <laughs> The only thing that would have made it better... The color of his skin, that's what was threatening. What it's getting on me! It's getting on me! <laughs> Idiots. It's gonna rub off. Time for a personal story, Shane. I'm getting older, so you're gonna have to back me up on this. <laughs> Shane and I were at Steak and Shake with a lot of our friends who we used to roleplay with. We used to do, uh, like, different, like, Dungeons and & Dragons and, like, uh, Vampire the Masquerade and stuff in front of this place called Dunkin' Donuts. And after we would get kicked out of Dunkin' Donuts, we would go to Steak and Shake. Uh, so we go up there... And there was this girl sitting in front of us, and our buddy, Rob, walked over, and uh, somebody at our table wanted to get her attention. So he taps her on the shoulder, and she screams at the top of her lungs and falls oh, to the floor. Oh, oh. No, I remember like, that. Ah! And just falls her fat ass right on the goddamn floor in front of everybody. The whole I, think, I think that was, there was extenuating. Well, it could be bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. It could be bullshit, but apparently she's supposed to have some kind of traumatic experience. She didn't like people touching her. Well, I mean, but normally... I don't know, because given the person that that was, and the, I think that's just... She, like, didn't have enough melodrama in her life when she was younger, <laughs> and she was trying to make up for it when she was older in life. That's that's what I, that's the opinion that I had of it. There wasn't anything fucking mellow about her yelling like a stuck <laughs> pig and falling on the goddamn floor. Because some people don't like being touched, and they just be like, ugh, you know? But you don't go, ah! And fall down like you just got shot. I think that's the same person that was uh i won't i won't mention any names but some person who would never ever do what was claimed it's like oh yes i was having sex with this person it's like the person that you're mentioning would never have sex with some random person he doesn't know <laughs> i won't mention any names but 
But anybody that knows us and was around at the time knows exactly what I'm talking about. Paladins don't have sex yes, with prostitutes. Exactly. Paladins don't have sex with prostitutes. Now everybody will definitely know that was around yes. that time. Man, I'm clueless. I have no clue. So. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, just remember that. If there's ever a, somebody who says a paladin slept with them, you remember your buddy Evan and Shane telling you the truth. That's right. All right. Fair enough. Okay, so... Anything else that you'd like to add, Evan, about traveling overseas, dealing with foreigners on foreigner soil? Uh, the the general consensus of this entire show would just be: <laughs> don't be an asshole. Yes. Be respectful. Try, you know, go over there. Be nice because you're a guest. You know, it's like if you go over to somebody's house. You know, just just be be thoughtful about what you do. Don't don't. Just knee jerk roll your reactions, you know. Mm-hmm. Somebody tries to fucking steal your money or something, you know, punch them in the face. But right. I mean, don't go over there and assume that the. I guess what I'm saying is, don't go over there assuming that because you're an American, everything has to revolve around you. Because a lot of people actually do make that mistake. It's that real arrogant American mentality has fucked up a lot of people. And my, don't be that guy. It's not necessarily all arrogant either. It's this is the same thing that I do every day where I live that the people there don't do. So you might do it by accident. I guess a safe thing to do would be if you look around and people aren't doing things of that type, you probably shouldn't do it either. <laughs> well, I know one thing that I've heard people who've traveled to Europe complain about, and it, this is this is a totally an American thing. So in America, when you go out to eat, you go, you sit down, they come and immediately serve you, you get your food quick, you know, ideally you get it quick, you eat right. it. Then you, you sit there maybe for a few more minutes afterwards, you pay and you, you leave. That's typically what happens in America. Mm-hmm. But that's not like that in most other countries. In fact, in most other countries, you would go and you sit down and they may, would expect you to sit there for several hours, even when you're done eating, just talking and hanging out. And people who would go overseas, I've heard a lot of them complain and say, like, I went to this one restaurant and I sat there forever. I had to ask them for the check because they weren't going to bring it to you because they thought you were still enjoying the time to sit down and talk with your friends and family. So, that's, a, that's a crazy complaint. That's nice. I had to ask for the... Res- yeah. I had to ask for the... Ch- like, that was hard. Yeah. But <laughs> now, if you sat there for several hours and they didn't come to take your order... <laughs> well, that's, that's a thing. different it's, story because then you're starving. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too is a lot of times like they don't necessarily run right up to your table and ask you everything. They give you a moment to sit down and get situated, look at the menu. Like you go to a, a restaurant in America and this drives you on the wall. I sit down, you hand me the menu. Do you know what you want, motherfucker? I just got the goddamn menu. <laughs> I, where am I even at? I don't even know. <laughs> you know. But over there, they give you time and they may give you 15 minutes to look at the menu before they come back around. But that's just the way that they operate. You know, and I think it's an American thing to always get up and go. We don't have tea time or siesta or stuff like that where you have this break during the day. We have 30 minute lunch. Get it and go. Eat it. Wolf it down. Run back to your desk. And <laughs> yeah, so I, some places get like like three months off during the year, right? Like France takes off a whole month in the middle of the summer. Yeah. And some places too, like uh, if like a, a, a wife has a baby, the husband gets maternity leave too. Not just a week, like a year. To stay home with the wife while she gets stuff taken care of. That's so fucking That's awesome. Crazy. I know, right? Be knocking a bitch up left and right. For real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never working again. I just have 17 children. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Wait a minute. This plane backfired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I bet it did. So let, let, there was one more thing that I got to add. Uh, I know we're running a little long here, but um, specifically talking to the guys out there. Um, in this day and age, you got you to gotta be kind of careful. So let's say that you you make a friend over there long term and you're getting together and you're hanging out. Eventually, if things go well, you may end up going back to somebody's house. Okay. Now think about this. You're in a you're in a foreign country. You're going to somebody's house that you don't know. You make it to the bedroom. Now, when you go down on that girl and you notice that she hasn't shaved, you don't fucking complain. Okay. <laughs> a lot of places outside of America still enthuse pubic hair. And there is nothing wrong with that. Don't you make her feel ugly just because she's not shaved like a baby's butt. You're respectful of their fucking culture. Oh my god. And you say thank you. Thank you. That is the most important lesson from this entire podcast. Long hair don't care. <laughs> I once I once heard a, uh, a, a man of great wisdom say... 
that pubic hair and lima beans have one thing in common. You just push them aside and keep eating. <laughs> Dude, let's end right now. We're not going to talk that. <laughs> All right. So if you have any questions or anything else you would like us to talk about, you can uh, email it to us at offenderspodcast at gmail.com. If you have questions specifically about traveling, you want to ask Evan, you can email them there too. We'll get them to him so he can answer them and email you back. Or you can always post on the Facebook page for the offenders as well. And we can answer questions there for you too. Also, really quick, uh, if you want to know what it is firsthand, you know, just get kind of get my experience. I've written blogs every time that I have gone to Japan. Like, I, I detailed every day that I was there. And you can, if you see me on Facebook, you can go to my notes section. And I have all of them posted up there with pictures and everything. So it'll give you a little bit more of an in-detailed experience as to what it's like going over there. So there you go. All right. Well, until next time, I'm Kyle. I'm Evan. What else you want to shame this? Sukoi Nihongo! <laughs> Alright, y'all have a good one. Bye.